Doctor, what are cavities and why do I have so many of them? This is a question we as dentists get asked almost on a daily basis in our practice. Tooth decay or cavities is the second most prevalent form of oral problems, second only to gum diseases. Almost 90% of the adult population suffers from some form of tooth decay. But mind you, it's not just the adults who are prone to cavities. Children too tend to develop cavities from a very early age on. And hence, I wanted to address this issue so that we, as family or as parents, can help our child achieve a more healthier and a beautiful smile. But before I start talking all about cavities, let me take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Rupasna Gosalia, founder and head dental surgeon at iSmile Dental Clinic, Mumbai. For those who haven't already subscribed to my channel, please, please do so. And don't forget to hit the bell icon in order to get regular updates and notifications. So let's talk about cavities. If you're someone who's looking to help prevent your child from developing these nasty cavities, then we must first begin by understanding what a cavity actually is and what causes these cavities to occur. As many of you may already be knowing, our mouth hosts a lot of bacteria. There's literally millions of them present in our mouth. And these bacteria love and they thrive on food which is rich in sugar and carbohydrates. So when we or our children consume this rich in sugar and carbohydrate food and this food sticks onto surfaces of our teeth, the bacteria are literally having a feast onto them and thus this gives us cavities. So when the bacteria are feasting onto the sugar rich food as a byproduct of their metabolism, they generate or they release a few acids and these acids are very harmful to our teeth, especially enamel or the outermost layer of our tooth. These acids literally draw out the calcium and the minerals from the enamel and they lead to small erosions in the tooth surfaces, which are nothing but cavities. By nature, a child's tooth or a milky tooth has lesser enamel as compared to that of an adult and hence they are more susceptible or more prone to developing cavities. A very interesting tip to note over here is that cavities don't hurt when they're in the initial stage or when they're just restricted to the enamel or the first layer of the tooth. It is only and only when these cavities develop and grow deeper into the tooth and attack the second layer is when the pain and the sensitivity and the complaints begin. So as a dentist, I would like to advise you do not wait for this stage or this to happen. Always bring your children every six months for regular dental checkups so that even a small spot of tooth decay can be spotted and then we can treat it at the initial stage itself. So now that we've understood a little bit about the science of how cavities develop, let's talk about what we can do to help prevent children from developing these cavities. Number one and golden rule, brushing twice a day. There is literally no exception to this rule, be it adults or children. You must, must brush your teeth twice in a day at morning and night without fail because brushing and scrubbing surfaces of teeth makes sure that all the food remnants are scrubbed out and we are not leaving that little bit of food behind for bacteria to feast on because that's the whole aim, right? To prevent cavities. We do not want those acids. We don't want the bacteria feeding on them so that we can have beautiful pearly white teeth. If your child is young, say one to one and a half years of age, then it is best that parents perform brushing for them twice in a day. And later, when they're old enough to brush by themselves, they can do that, but under your guidance and under your supervision, so that you know they haven't missed out on any teeth surfaces. Tip number two, use a fluoridated toothpaste for your child. Fluorides are minerals which help in restoring the health of your tooth. They make the enamel more stronger and lesser prone to cavities or tooth decay. And the best form or the best method to help your tooth get this fluoride is via using a fluoridated toothpaste. I'd like to take a moment here to insist on the fact that please use the fluoridated toothpaste that has been recommended for your child which is age appropriately recommended by your dentist. Do not just pick up anything that is available over the counter at any store. It is a must that your dentist has a look at your child's teeth, understands their oral care regime and then recommends an appropriate toothpaste. But having said that, I would like to emphasize or guide you on how much toothpaste is required for your child. 
For infants who are less than 3 years, we recommend to just use a small smear on the toothbrush, almost the size of a grain. For those children aged between 3 and 6, we would recommend to use the toothpaste that is just say the size of half of a pea. And for children who are 6 and above, a full pea size would be what is best advised. Now moving on to the third thing, rinsing after every meal. Remember I told you in point number one to brush twice in a day. So we are going to be brushing at morning and at night. But do children only eat twice in a day? No, they eat and eat and keep snacking throughout the day. And this will only mean that little bit will be still stuck behind and left over. So in order to prevent that and prevent the bacteria from literally growing onto this food and cause cavities, the best what you can do and introduce in your child's oral care regime is to encourage them to rinse their mouth after every meal. No matter how small or big the meal is, it could be just a snack or a glass of milk or say a fruit or a few biscuits. It is a must that they rinse their mouth thoroughly or if they are not old enough to yet understand the act of rinsing, they could just have a nice big glass of water that helps to flush out all the food and also keeps them well hydrated. Number four, avoid food which is very sugary and very sticky. So everything from chocolates to caramel, sweets, cakes, everything must be avoided. I know that it is impossible to do it and we do not even want our children to be away from all these food, right? So the best way to keep cavities at bay and still enjoy all this is by restricting or reducing the intake of these foodstuffs. So all your chocolates and sweets, let them be as rewards. Don't make it into a daily habit or a ritual that the child just cries for it and you just hand it out to them. Keep it like a reward or something that you would give your child on a special occasion. Maybe if they performed well at an activity in school or if they are well behaved. So make them look forward to that little bit. This little tip of positive reinforcement and handing out sweets and chocolates at correct occasions has worked very well for some of my patients whose children had been hooked on to sweets and chocolates. It doesn't just help you from preventing them from getting cavities but it also is a great way to keep their sugar levels under check because this is the healthier way to go about. Tip number five is very easy to follow and I'm sure all children will be able to do this. Drink lots of water. Water is a great aid to neutralize the acids that are left behind on the surfaces of teeth by these bacteria that are thriving onto the food remnants. And once these acids are neutralized, the chances of the tooth developing a cavity become much and much lesser. The next and a very important thing that I want to share over here is avoid bottle feeding or feeding milk just as your child falls asleep. Many parents are doing this and wondering that why is my child getting so many cavities even though he or she is not too much into sugary things and chocolates etc. But this could be one of the reasons why the cavities are coming along. So milk is naturally rich in a sugar which is called as lactose and when this sugar or lactose is left behind in the oral cavity, bacteria grow and they cause cavities. I know that this is a very difficult habit to give up completely. It will be certainly difficult for a few children. So what we as parents can do is make sure that milk is not left behind on the surfaces of teeth. So let me share two little tips that will help this from happening. Firstly, if your child is too young and say is just bottle feeding or breast feeding yet and cannot brush or it's very unlikely for them to get up and brush their teeth or for you to brush it for them because they are so young in age, what you can do is just keep a small feeding bottle which doesn't have milk but a little bit of water instead. Once they are done with feeding with breast milk or with the bottled milk, you can just help them suckle onto that little bit of water which will just swish around all the remaining milk in their mouth and that will reduce the chance of forming what we call as baby bottle cavities or nursing bottle caries. Alternately, what you can do is use a muslin cloth, a very soft muslin cloth. Just wrap it around your finger and use it like a finger brush all around your child's mouth and make sure that the tooth surfaces are clean. 
The next tip and uh, I would say something that most parents miss out on because there's not much awareness about it is pit and fissure sealants. Now this is a very simple procedure or a technique that we do as dentists on the surfaces of your child's teeth which reduce their probability or susceptibility to developing cavities in future. A child's molar tooth has got a lot of grooves and pits and fissures present onto its surface which is just naturally how a tooth is and these are the places and the grooves are the places where food tends to get stuck and where the cavities actually begin from. So a simple technique that we do is apply pit and fissure sealants. What is this sealant if you ask? It is just like a protective layer or a barrier which is applied onto the surfaces of these molar teeth. It fills up and smoothens out these grooves thus preventing food from getting stuck into it and thus preventing tooth decay. It's a very simple and a very effective procedure. It hardly requires say 5 to 10 minutes of time per tooth and doesn't even require any local anesthesia and there is no pain at all. So I think it's a must that we do this procedure for children once their molar teeth have started to erupt. A little step comes a long way in preventing tooth decay. I have seen this personally, it's a very effective technique and I would highly, highly recommend it. Now last and not the least is regular dental checkups. It is imperative that your child visits a dental clinic once every six months because as I said earlier in the video, initial forms of tooth decay are absolutely asymptomatic. Your child is not going to complain. You will never even know that a cavity is developing. Only a dentist will be able to spot it and treat it when it's still in the initial stage so do not wait for pain to happen please bring them every six to eight months along and this little thing will not just help us in preventing cavities but it also helps us assess your child's oral hygiene maintenance and we can even introduce a thing or two additional if required in their oral hygiene regime which will in future prevent cavities. So this is a must, do not miss out on their dental appointments. If you're thinking what is the right time or when should my child's first dental visit be, there's a very simple thing, it's called the rule of one. So it should either be on your child's first birthday or when the first tooth erupts in your child's mouth. Either of these two, whichever is earlier. And following that, every six months, you must choose to bring your child to a dental clinic. I hope these little tips will help you to get your child's mouth more healthy. If you guys still have any further questions, be it cavities or any other issues pertaining to your child's mouth, then please let me know about those. Leave them in the comments below. And if you have some other techniques that you all have tried with your children and have worked, then please do share them with us. I love hearing from you guys. And until next time, stay healthy and keep smiling.